Welcome Jammer students to class today on this Friday the 28th. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. Let's quickly go over these announcements. Uh, you will have a test next week, probably on Friday more than likely. So a review sheet on Thursday of next week. That should uh, give us plenty of time to finish Chapter 9. So be looking forward to that and make sure you're really prepared for that test. Should not be a fearful thing. This should be a thing It's kind of like a relaxing, enjoyable time. No notes and no homework um, if you know your stuff. So if you know your stuff, tests uh, should be something that's not dreaded. Uh, you owe me yesterday's homework from Thursday. And so actually yesterday on Thursday, all that we did was homework, remember? It was two homework assignments. I'm going to count that as one assignment. Remember, it was like paid something, and there were about six problems. And then paid something, there was about eight or something like that. And there was two videos to watch in case you needed help. So those are due. Please turn those in now, if you would, please. Jay, say you've done a marvelous job of getting caught back up. I have uh, no, no bone to pick with you. You're doing great, and, and I appreciate that very much. Um, and so if I'm wrong on any of this, would you please just let me know? I will work with you. Um, uh, I've not emailed your parents because you're so far behind. You've just done a great job. Uh, for those that don't know, she's completely got all of Chapter 8 caught up, and all she has to do is take a test. That's quite amazing. Um, I don't think I have these assignments from you yet, Jason. So if you do me a favor over the weekend, please, you, you know you can access the videos at your home anytime you want to. Just go to these videos that have the word homework, like Geometry 9.1 homework, Geometry 9.2 homework, Geometry 9.3 homework, and just look look the assignments up and see if you've done them. Maybe I've graded them and passed them back out, um, or maybe you're sure that you've done them, and maybe, maybe I've made a mistake. So just talk to me. I will work with you because you've done so well with getting caught up. <clears throat> But I need you to do some checking on this, okay? And then students, if you don't finish the video today, because maybe the quiz you've already taken took so long, then you must finish the video at home. You need to finish the video at home over the weekend because this video is very important, okay? So with that in mind, um, you should have already taken your quiz, and I hope you all did well. It was exactly like I said, wasn't it? All surface area problems, just like I said. And so hopefully you studied prepared and you were ready for the quiz okay that's all that I can do is tell you what's going to be on the quiz and trust that you've listened learned done the homework really really diligently learned the math and studied and made sure you were ready for the quiz okay all right I want to really I want to attempt to really eliminate any confusion today between surface area and volume okay of prisms and cylinders <clears throat> On Tuesday of this week, three days ago, we learned how to find the surface area of prisms and cylinders. Look below here for a quick review, okay? Do you remember how to find the surface area of this prism right here? Remember there's six sides, so you list out the top, the bottom. I'm just going to scribble here to save time. Back, front, left, right, okay? Remember you found the area of one face, area of another face, area of another face. You found the area of all six faces. Excuse me for yawning. <clears throat> Sorry. And then you add them up. Okay? Remember how to do that? I think you do. And it was pretty, you know, pretty cut and dry. Then we learned how to find the surface area of a cylinder. Now I'm going from memory on the formula. So look in your notes and, and make sure I'm right on this if you want to. But I'm pretty sure I'm right. But um, it should be... Let's see, 2 pi r squared plus, now the other one would be, let me think this through for a second, it should be, um, it would be the, uh, either pi, they either gave it as 2 pi r h or um, pi d h. Believe it or not, I'm not going to get into big detail, but 2R is the same thing as D, and so I forget which one of those it was, but either way, you have the formula in your notes. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> it was this right here, 99.9% .9 sure. So to find the surface area of a cylinder, you just use this, for, this formula here, right? I mean, pretty simple. So um, 
when we say surface area, we're talking about the outside of the object. Like if you wanted to paint this box, paint all of the sides, or the faces, paint the front, paint the side, paint the back, top, left, bottom, all of that. Well, that's going to be surface area because you're you're painting something on the surface. If you wanted to paint this paint this cylinder, and you wanted to paint the top of it and then the bottom of it and then paint the sides of it all the way around, that's surface area, okay? Surface area is dealing with the area of all the faces and all of the sides on the outside, okay? Well, today we're going to once again deal with prisms and cylinders. Do you understand that? So we're still dealing with the two same solids. However, we're going to do something different. The difference is we're going to learn how to find the volume of these two solids. The volume. Okay? And so that's what we're going to do today. In the past we've learned how to find the surface area. Today we're going to learn how to find the volume of prisms and cylinders. Take some really good notes. This is not difficult and you should be fine. Your heading is volume of prisms and cylinders, lesson 9.4. And the date today is the 28th. So if you'd like to keep track of that, 2, 28, 14. Volume of prisms and cylinders, lesson 9.4. Now, in order to find the volume of these two solids, prisms and cylinders, the procedure is the same. Isn't that nice? Same procedure. You don't, you don't have to learn two different methods. Here is the procedure. Number one, always flip the solid so that the parallel congruent bases, or I should say faces, that'd be the exact same thing either way, are on the top and bottom. <clears throat> So once again, flip the solid so that the parallel congruent fa faces or bases are on the top and bottom. And then you find the, are you ready, area of the base. We can all do that. We all know how to find the area of a base. The base might be a circle. The base might be a triangle. The base might be a rectangle. But whatever the base is, we know how to find area. That's easy. So find the area of the base and then multiply the area by the height. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you can remember, remember those two steps, you'll be fine. All right, let me get a drink here and we'll continue on. It is really that simple. The problem is that students confuse surface area with volume. So you really need to study and make sure that you know the difference between the two. When I ask you to find the surface area of a solid, know what formula to use, know what you're doing. If I ask you to find the volume of a solid, know what formula to use, know what steps to use, know what you're doing. And that really comes down to you. It's your responsibility to memorize these and make sure you're very familiar with them. Now, let's go ahead and take notes on one, two, three problems. And that's it. And there's no homework, by the way. No homework. When you come in Monday, I will give you homework to work on this, um, <clears throat> on this video to practice the notes, okay? So this is not a very difficult day. You should have already taken your quiz. There's probably not much time left in class. And so I'm not giving you any homework to do over the weekend. <clears throat> Okay, please copy this in your notes if you're able to. Find the volume of the cylinder. Now, I intentionally had this thing turn sideways to remind you we need to do step one. And step one says, remember what step one says to do? Flip whenever you're finding, let me, let me emphasize this, whenever I say find the volume of a cylinder, you flip the cylinder so that the parallel congruent faces are on the top and the bottom. Let me show you what I mean. Please watch carefully. There we go. Look at that. I have flipped it. So look at my top face now. It's a circle. Look at my bottom face down here. It's a circle. And are not those two uh, faces, the top and the bottom, congruent? Aren't they the same circle? Sure they are. Aren't they parallel? Sure they are. One's running across the top and one's running across the bottom. So the first thing you do is you always flip the cylinder so that the two congruent parallel faces are on the top and the bottom. That's so easy. And if it's on a test or a quiz, you just pick up the sheet of paper like this. 
if it's if it's on a test like that and you've got a sheet of paper sorry about that and you've got a sheet of paper well it's not going to work probably I'll try and see you just take the sheet of paper and you just turn that sheet of paper like that okay so um, not too difficult um, so we've turned the the cylinder the right way and now the formula or the step says find the area of the base and multiply it times the height the height well here's the base the base is a circle, is it not? So we know how to find the area of a circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So for pi, I'm going to substitute 3.14. And for radius, I'm going to substitute 3. And of course, it's radius squared. 3 times 3 is 9. So now I have 3.14 times 9, which would be, let's see, 36 carrier 3, uh, 2 carrier 1, I think 28 point Two, six, all right, so that's the area of this entire base. So what we learned earlier was, let's go back a page, you find the area of the base and multiply this area by the height. So area of the base is 28.26, and I'm going to take 28.26, and I'm going to multiply that by 4 times the height. Now I've got a calculator here, let me do that very quickly, please and my children were playing with my calculator so it's all messed up so hold on one second here all right times four there we go you're going to get 113.04 113.04 now would you please listen to me did you find the surface area no did you find the area no you found the volume and whenever you're finding volume it's always cubic units so you say feet cubed or cubic feet. Now here's what you just did, okay? Remember earlier when I was pointing out to you if you're finding the surface area, remember I told you earlier if you're finding the surface area, it was like sorry students, um, it was like painting the outside of this box or painting the outside of the cylinder. Well what's volume? Well volume is like if you were going to pour water inside of this right here and fill this thing up with water top to bottom the whole inside of this thing that's what volume is volume tells you how much a solid holds on the inside that's all the volume is okay it's not difficult and whenever you find volume it's cubic units in this case it's cubic feet all right so let's continue on let's do uh, three I think I said three and I apologize um, I think we're going to do of uh, no just three problems that's correct so here's one we have two more to do all right now <clears throat> let's find the volume of this prism here okay so draw a picture if you can or do the best you can to do that but I want you to find the volume of this prism okay find the volume now um, <clears throat> um First of all, you want to make sure that the prism is flipped the correct way. And I'm going to be honest with you students, I don't care which way you flip this prism, you could turn this thing so many different ways and it wouldn't matter. You could turn this thing this way, like that, and look at that. We still have the top and the bottom parallel and congruent. You could turn this thing this way and you would still have the top and the bottom um, being parallel and congruent this is just one of those prisms it really doesn't matter which way you turn it um, either way the top face and the bottom face are going to be congruent and they're going to be parallel so no matter how you do that you're going to be okay let me show you what I'm saying here's the top face right here Here's the bottom face right here. So you're saying, Mr. Eric, no matter which way you flip this one, you'll get the right answer? Yes, I am. That's exactly what I'm saying, and you will, too. It doesn't matter. Um, so there's the top face, there's the bottom face. Notice they're both congruent. They're the exact same rectangle. And notice they're both parallel. And so you are totally good with going ahead and moving on. So you have flipped it the correct way. Then we, then we said, when you're finding the volume of a prism, you find the area of the base. Well, the base looks like a rectangle to me. Here's the base right here. It's a rectangle, and it's a 7 by 4 rectangle. So 7 times 4 is 28. So the area of the base is 28. And then I told you, you always take the area of the base and multiply it by the height, how high this solid is. Well, obviously, if it's 5 over here, 
then it's also going to be 5 right here. So the height is 5. So now you take the area of the base, which was 7 times 4, 28, and you multiply that by the height, and you're going to get 140 cubic inches. 140 cubic inches inches okay now that's the inside pretend this is an aquarium and pretend you're going to fill it up with gallons of water before you put your fish in and how much would this tank hold it's going to hold 140 cubic inches of water now mr hart that really doesn't help me i want to convert it to gallons i'm getting a little older these days and the conversion factor slips my mind but there's a conversion you can do that transfers or converts either i forget if it's cubic feet or cubic inches or cubic something over to gallons and so that can be done very easily okay but the volume in cubic inches is going to be 140 all right let's take a look at one more problem and then we will be finished for this class period okay on our last problem notice the directions say find the volume of the prism find the volume of the prism now right now if we leave it the way it is please look at this here's the top face right here and here's the bottom face it's not even a face it's like it's resting on this little edge right here about ready to fall over there's no way the top face and the bottom edge are congruent there's no way we're gonna have to flip this thing so that the parallel congruent faces are on the top and the bottom so here we go let's go ahead and flip this thing around and that's a lot better now let me show you what I've done here now I can highlight this top side right here and I can highlight this bottom side or face this bottom face right here and notice the top face and the bottom face are both right triangles they're congruent triangles and they're also parallel so now I'm good to go ahead and move on to step two I have accomplished step one step one is to always flip the prism so that the two congruent parallel faces are on the top and the bottom alright now you only do that when you're dealing with the volume of what prisms and the volume of what else cylinders okay there's going to be other steps for other solids on another day not today but today we're dealing with volume of prisms and cylinders and so because we're dealing with those you must always flip those so that the top and the bottom faces are congruent and parallel so let's move on to step two step two says find the area of the base and multiply it by the height now obviously the height the height is three there's the height right here, 3. The area of the base is a little trickier. I mean, it's going to be a right triangle. It's kind of funny. Watch this. If you were to cut this triangle out, it's not going to look right because they have it drawn slanted so that it gives this, this, uh, this solid depth. That's supposed to be a right triangle, and it doesn't look like it, does it? It doesn't look like it at all, actually. And so um, really nothing we can do with that um, except understand that it's uh, it is a right triangle so really when we go to find the area of this base right here we're really dealing with a right triangle that looks like this see that right angle right there connecting the 8 and the 6 put that right angle right here and we have an 8 here and we have a 6 here so we have a right triangle excuse me <coughs> we have a right triangle with a base of 8 and a height of 6 well how do you find the area of a triangle have we forgotten that? I hope not. 1 half times base times height. 1 half times 8 times 6. And that's going to give you 24 if you type that into your calculator. 1 half times 8 times 6. So now I know the area of the base is 24. And after you find the area of the base, you multiply it by the height. And of course, 24 times 3 is going to give you 72. And that's going to be 72 cubic feet. 72 cubic feet so you just found the amount of space that is on the inside of this triangular prism triangular prism okay so students that's it um, I hope this has been um, helpful and I hope you're doing okay with this material if there's any questions call me or email me and hope you did well in your quizzes and no homework over the weekend so enjoy that and Monday when you come into class I will have homework waiting for you to do and Lord willing we should have a test next Friday okay um, have a good weekend call or email if you have any questions